Giving. Who weighs more? I do. <laughs> well, home stretch. Uh, and it's a real short home stretch for this class because today is uh, the last actual real content day, unless I don't get through everything. But this is the last lecture where I'm giving you new stuff. You don't seem as excited. <laughs> You're all disappointed like I am, right? I was, actually was. I was coming to class, I'll admit, and I was, I mean, to, to, to campus, and I was saying, oh, I don't get to teach him any more stuff. But you're probably happy. So today's, yeah, chapter 29. Uh, Wednesday, will anything I forgot, I'll fill in and, and review this last unit stuff on waves, sound and light. And then we'll give you your fourth midterm exam Friday. Next week will be all review. As you guys go and study and search and look, we'll go through stuff. I've already written the final. I'm ahead, at least in this class. So I know the questions. I can look at it and go, oh yeah, be sure to tell them about that. Right, okay. So you guys remember, you know, wink, wink. So that'll help. Uh, a lot of people... More when we get there on the review, but a lot of people wonder, well, yeah, what are you going to cover? Well, don't you have a list of all the topics? Well, you guys already have all that. No, I'm not going to give you a nifty little, here is everything we've ever studied all semester, because you know what we've studied. You got the chapters. You have all the homeworks and the pre-lectures, the past exams. It's that stuff. There's nothing new. The stuff we emphasized, the stuff I tested you on through homework, clickers, pre-lectures, and exams. That's the stuff that's important. So it, it'll be that stuff. Um, but if, obviously we'll go back over uh, some of that. And if you have any questions, if you didn't understand any of that stuff then, now's your chance to uh, figure it out before I test you on it again on the final. The final is, oh, I just forgot. I think it's like 20% of your overall grade. That way, at least, if you flunk the entire thing, you can still pass. I never like those courses where it's all or nothing. <laughs> Do you have any questions about anything? Administrative, physics, life in general? <laughs> what should you major? Physics! <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> Yeah, I changed my major when I was a second semester junior. So. I, I knew what I liked, science. I was in, was in engineering all that time. Then I realized it was the physics of all of them I liked, so I switched. All right. Then I'm going to start with three clicker questions. Review some of this color stuff. You've had a while to forget it, so... <laughs> Let's review. One of the uh, projector's light bulbs is out, so just got one screen, but that's fine. There's the session ID and the channel number. That's, I always hit that. I don't want that button. I want that button. All right. The colors on the cover of your physics book are due to what? This is also true for the colors on the cover of your favorite magazine or a picture in the newspaper. Those are due to what? Color addition, color subtraction, color interference, or scattering. Anybody not had a chance to log in? Okay. I know, it can take a while the first time.
10? Are you in? Oh. You're good? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Hey, a lot of other classes are saying attendance is low today. We got 58 responses. I think that is pretty good. 59. And three-fourths if you think it's color subtraction. That is correct. It's the inks and pigments on printed materials. And what do inks and pigments do? They subtract colors out. They filter them out. My, uh, the dye in my sweatshirt is red. So which colors is it absorbing? Green. Green and blue. They're getting filtered out of the white light. So red is reflecting back to your eye. It's the same if you see that red on a book. They're subtracting light out of the white spectrum. If you just shine colored lights, that would be, they'd be adding together. They're adding up in your eye, but it's the colors on the cover of your physics book are subtracting it out to result in those colors. Yes? Color interference is, um, we did it the last thing and I brought it out again, soap bubbles. I was doing that one. There were, I think we've hit three ways you could subtract colors. Pigments and filters, we just discussed. That. Um, Where's the other one? Just forgot. Brain fart. <laughs> well, interference is another one. Waves can interfere. So they can constructively interfere and add together, color addition, or they can destructively interfere and cancel each other out, subtraction. That's what a soap film does. That's one way it got the colors out. Uh, oh, dispersion was, was another way to get the colors. They, it spreads them out because they're different wavelengths, and so you can get different colors depending on your angle. Uh, scattering was the one I was thinking of, scattering. Like blue eyes in the blue sky. If blue light is scattered out, that's why they look blue. But the white light of the sun then, has sub blue's been subtracted out of it, so you're just left with red and green, and it looks yellow. So scattering's a way to subtract out a color. Pigments are a way to subtract out a color. And interference through that superposition is a way. Yes? What about uh, TVs? Good question. Televisions, have you ever looked at the uh, screen of your uh, smartphone, laptop, or a TV real closely? Who's done that? What have you noticed? You just see a bunch of little pixels that are colored. And what three colors are they? Red, green, and blue. That's because they're projecting colors of light. You add those three colors together to get any other color. If you want white on your screen, there's an easy way to do this. Uh, take a drop of water. And just set it on a white part of your, um, well, any color, but what, let's say a white part on your smartphone, your screen. You, it should magnify it, kind of like a lens, to help you see the little pixels. You ought to see little red, green, and blue dots. They're all shining. Pick a yellow spot on your screen. Maybe go to your flashlight tool and just make it yellow, you know, the front. Put a drop on there on a magnifying glass. What two pixels should you see? Red and green. So yeah, television screens like that are, and monitors are color addition. Anytime the light adds together, it's color addition. Whenever they subtract, something's filtering it out, like pigments, or scattering, or interference. I'm glad these lead to more discussion and review. So you're learning that way. It's, yeah. Higher quality, you, you, television, it's usually what we define that as, I mean, the, the purity of the colors, but that's usually not an issue. But resolution is what the HD TV, why was that all popular? Well, one, the televisions are bigger, so of course it's going to look better. But not if you're, each pixel's this big. Those three together, well, that can only represent one little spot 
Just make them smaller if you can fit more pixels in. I mean, your cameras. A 16.1 megapixel sensor, 12 megapixels, 50 megapixels. That's just the resolution of how it can only detect light in that little small of a resolution. And so you can get more detail if they're smaller. Look sharper. Yeah. Oh, if a television advertises they have a yellow pixel. Well, they, they must be combining. Well, now they can use LEDs to shine. If you start with a yellow LED, that's kind of like printing. We use cyan, magenta, and yellow to filter. But some people just, well, you know what? I got red ink. I've already mixed it. And they just spray that on there. It's just a shortcut. I wouldn't say it would make it look any better because you can combine red and green to make yellow or you can just shine yellow. Now, red and green is going to take up twice the space as the yellow, so maybe it helps with their resolution. Exactly. But the, the colors adding is the same. Is that the DPI? Dots per inch on a printer. Yes, dot matrix printer, even laser printers. They're basically just spitting dots of cyan, magenta, and yellow. And the smaller they can do that, the number of dots they can fit in a print, the better the resolution, the sharper their image. So, oh, that's not the one I wanted, sorry. I wanted this one instead. I actually asked you that other one Friday. You just didn't realize it. <laughs> so this one. Complementary color of blue is what? We haven't used the word complementary as much in lecture as your book does. Your book uses it a lot. But you mentioned it. Three of those colors are the complementary colors. Or if you're familiar with the picture, your color wheel, complementary means one definition opposite of. It's a way to think of that. So, what color is opposite or complementary to blue? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Most of you yellow, that's correct. Yellow is red and green. There's no blue in yellow. It's on the opposite side. That's what it means. What's the complementary color of magenta? Green, because magenta is red and blue, not green. So green's complementary of it. And complementary of cyan? Red. One more. The color of light that passes most readily through a thick atmosphere is which of those? Which color goes further through the atmosphere? Your clue here, this is a wave. We talked a lot about this with sound waves. Certain sound wave can go further. It's for the same reason that light waves can go further. What is that key that makes a wave go further through something? Might help you answer this one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, get your votes in, three, two, one, zero. Two thirds red 
That's right. So two ways I, I look at this. Probably the easier is, well, the sky's blue. So blue's getting scattered and subtracted out. So what makes it through? Red. The reason, though, is which of those has the higher frequency? Blue. So it interacts more. That's why it gets scattered out, actually. Just like high frequency sound, interactions, energy's dissipated. It doesn't go as far. High frequencies, whether it's sound or blue light. The longer wavelengths with the lower frequencies go further. Red or AM radio, which has a longer frequency than FM. Uh, longer wavelength, lower frequency than FM. Questions? Make sense now? Okay, you can put your clickers away. So, chapter 29 starts out, even though we've discussed other things, it starts out with a principle named after a scientist. It looks like Hugens, or Hugens, uh, I think it's pronounced more like Hawkins, Hawkins. It's probably got a guttural sound too. Hawkins, Hawkins principle. Basically, we've looked at waves as mostly waves. At one point, we even looked at them as particles. We've, we can do them as beams of, of light. You can also look at them as wave fronts of light. This one focuses more on, no pun intended, the wave fronts. So here's a source at the middle here, and it's going to send out a wave front, like ripples in a pond. And it's going to spread radially outward, like this. And when that ripple, the wave disturbance, in other words, the wave that's traveling, the disturbance that's traveling, the water just goes up and down. It's going to get to these obstacles, these other little points, edges or pencils, whatever you want. When it hits those, what do you think happens to the wave front? Say again? They could slow down. That would be if it, it goes into them. They're just going to block it. Think of like water waves in, in, in a pond, and there's like a pier, a beam. The, it's, just, it's in the way. You think it'll make other waves? It'll bend? Or will it just pass by it like it's not there? Two of you think it, something's going to happen your gut. What do the rest of you think? Scatter? So that's three votes. Something's going to happen, that interaction. Let's see. This isn't an animation, but it, it helps us visualize. So they go, they go, boom. You're right, there's an interaction. It's like each of those then acts as its own point source of a wave. And they send out wave fronts. And you can, you can see they, they start curving again. We'll do it again. So it starts out in the middle. It's nice and round. When it hits each of those obstacles, it's like it starts over, and they send out their own individual waves. That's diffraction. It's where it, you picture these. If you hit an edge like the edge of the obstacles, both sides. If it's small enough, it's like a single little point. It sends out its own wave that curves. So one more time, it comes in. And let's look at one at the top here. Right there. See how it's, it's fairly flat relative to that point. Then once it hits that point, it curves. That bending of a wave is called diffraction. D-I-F-F, -F, diffraction, as opposed to refraction. Yes, Court, you still have a comment? Yes, this is only showing the one that goes forward. There would be a reflection also. I'm going to show that in a moment. Yes, you're right. There would be a reflected wave. But to not muddy up the waters, again, no pun intended, uh, we just show the, the onward moving one. You can see what happens to those waves then, too. After they hit the obstacle, they're like little point sources. And we've done that before, right there. This wave front is going to start to interfere with this wave front. And what can they do? 
Yeah, they could constructively interfere and add up or destructively interfere and cancel depending on when they're in phase and out of phase. So a little further, there you go, you got superposition and you'll have in phase, out of phase, in phase, out of phase, in phase, out of phase spots. So diffraction is the bending of a wave around an edge. If those individual waves now come together and interfere, you can get constructive and destructive interference. Uh, we'll, we'll show that. <laughs> Questions about that? Let's show you some water waves then. Because again, everything we've done up to this point works for all kinds of waves. The end of this lecture, we'll do one little thing that that isn't true for, but not yet. You see, you can see the waves going already as I move it, the ripples. So I'm going to take this nylon rod, it's just round c c cylinder, and if I just kind of roll it forward, vroom, you can see waves go forward. Right there, it, it smushes them together. Remember our slinky? Compression. It's like you can see the waves. Literally, on the surface of this water, there's ripples that look like this. So I'm focusing on those as casting a shadow. Remember how when light went through the heat above the lamp, it refracted? And so we could see light and dark spots because it changed speed? It's doing a similar thing, the light of the projector, as it goes through those bumps and troughs. It goes through them at slightly different speeds and refracts a little differently, the angles. Or you can just think of them as lenses, but one the lens is up and one the lens is down. So it's going to bend the light to slightly different spots. That's how we can see these waves, which is kind of nice. It's a ripple tank. You can see them go. You see them reflect back to the left after they hit the edge. Let's put in a, uh, an edge here. So the waves, the wave front should come in and do what? Reflect. And at what angle? the same angle they came in at. We measure in respect to the normal. The normal to this is perpendicular, like that. So if they come in at this angle, they're going to go out at that angle. So we should see some waves come in, some waves go out. Let's see. Can you see them reflect off of it? Let's see if I go faster. They're not as intensive waves. Some pass by it. Stick that a little more. And what we're looking for are any ripples that head off in this direction. Do you see any ripples going that way? I'm not hearing any responses. Okay, good. Because I can see them, but I know they're dimmer, so I just, can you recognize them? All right. Um, let's just make an edge now. Because you know the reflected wave is just going to go right back at it. Here, we'll put it higher up. The reflected wave will come right back. So in here. This wave should go forward. Unaffected. But hey, here's an edge. What do you expect to happen? Diffraction. It should bend around it. Will we see anything kind of end up over here? What do you think? So check over here. You just see the way that wave just goes forward. Does anything end up over here? Yeah, you see it curve around. It comes into here and starts heading off that way. This little edge acts like a point. Hawkins principle. And it's like a source. And there goes its wave front around the edge. That's diffraction. Sound does that. That's why you can hear somebody around the corner. There's reflections also, but sound can just diffract, bend around the edge. Light does the same thing. Water does the same thing. Let's make us an opening. Now there's two edges. It ought to diffract this way and this way. Let's see. Can you see that? It curves down here and up here. It's like this 
opening, this slit, is like its own light uh, source, of wave source, and it just spreads out radially away from it. Let's watch it again. See how they curve out? That's diffraction. It's the spreading of the waves is another way to think of diffraction. It, they're bending. Refraction makes them bend, but that's when they change mediums because they go different speeds. Diffraction stays in the same medium. It's, it starts in water, it ends in water. There's just an edge to bend it, diffract it. And so the wave front, it's like it spreads out. What do you think will happen if I narrow this opening? Let's make the slit smaller. Do you think it would be harder or easier for these waves to get through? Harder. Harder. That's right. So what do you think will happen to the diffraction? Greater. If it's harder to get through, it will be affected more. So it's, we should see more spreading. Let's try it. So here's before. And let's smush them together. Do you see that it's more curved? They go really fast. <laughs> Maybe slow is working better. Back to wide. Still diffracts, but it's less curved. Is that conspicuous enough? I can't see your reaction. Okay, good. You could have a double slit. What should happen? This will diffract and spread out. This will diffract and spread out. But then this spreading and this spreading can interfere. Remember when I did this with an overhead transparency sheet where we had wave fronts like that? We had two light sources. Two, it was two sound sources at the time. Well, here's two water sources. That's going to make ripples. This is going to make ripples. So we ought to see them overlap over here. Constructive and or destructive interference. Let's try one wave. Do you see them crossing and overlapping? So when they're in phase or out of phase? So you would get, I don't know if you can see, there's a darker spot kind of in the middle. That's where they overlap and add together. That would be, if it was sound, it'd be louder. Water, it's a bigger wave, ripple. The amplitude increases. And if it's light, you'd see a bright spot. But right off to the sides, check here. The waves will be out of phase. You'll see one come and then the other. One's up while the other's down. It's not as clear as my transparency slides, but can you, you see the idea there? Especially down here. They're not at the same spot. And so if this was sound, it'd be quieter. If it was light, there'd be no light. That's why it doesn't show up as well either, because the, rip, the, the ripple isn't as big at that spot as it is here. Okay, before I leave this, we can do refraction. There's a piece of plastic. It's fairly thick, but it's not as thick as the depth of the water. So what we're going to do is wave speed actually depends on the depth of the water. Water waves do. So it's deeper here, deeper, deeper, deeper. Right here, there's, it's very shallow because it's just the thin layer of water above the surface of this. What do you think happens to the wave velocity? Yeah. Well, it definitely changes. So we should see the, the wave front bend on this intersection here. The waves here, you might not, they, they might look the same. The waves here might look the same, but watch right along here. Will you see the wave be straight or will it kind of curve? Let's try it. It looks like it's curving this way. Can you see that? If one wave's kind of straight and then it kind of and then straight again. We'll do it again. Nope. 
So what it's doing, if, it, if it's going like that, well, what, well, let's reason it through. The wave is doing Yeah, I'll just use my arm. It's coming in like this. And right there, this is turning more this way. Because we saw a curve. This keeps going. It's like this part of the axle. Remember our wheels on an axle? This part slows down. That part's going faster. That's the only way it can turn that way. So yeah, in this case, the water wave is slowing down as it gets shallower. One more time. Yes, ask away. Yeah, this, this happens as the depth in the ocean changes, so does the wave speed. So as they approach the shore, they can get narrower. There's other things going on, but this is true. Yeah. And if it was hitting a sandbar at an angle like this, that wave, literal wave, waterway, ocean wave, would refract and change direction along the interface because it's deeper here and shallower there. But usually this is more gradual. But even over time, it could just gradually turn too. So yeah, water waves can refract and they can defract. Let's do it with light. All right, this is what I'm focusing on. It's just an opening. There's a little square in there. Can you see it? Let's just point. Did I bring? I'll use this guy from back here. So light is going through there, but here there's edges. So remember we called this is blocking it, so that's an umbra. Umbra. And you can see the fuzziness around the edges. That's a penumbra. There's fuzziness here, penumbra. Because some light from one edge can hit that side while the other edge gets blocked. It's partial, partially blocked. Big openings. Now, the wavelength of light has, is a certain size. Now, this is white light, so it varies. You've got different wavelengths. But they're all in a certain range. The, the, way, the range of those wavelengths is small compared to the size of this opening. I mean, I can stick my pinky through it. So it's a big opening. I think you know light is probably a size of its wave is much, much, much smaller than that. You want to know how small it is? Do you remember how to calculate it? That's a good review. We did it with sound waves. What's the relationship between wavelength and frequency for a wave? Frequency, if the frequency is higher, the wavelength is lower. Yes, for a given velocity, for how fast it's traveling. So like sound, la, that's a short wave because it's vibrating faster. But it still travels to your ear at the same speed as la. Big wave, lower frequency. So it's related with wave velocity. Uh, I'll write it on the board when the lights are up. But remember, velocity V equals wavelength times frequency. It's true for light. Do you know how fast light goes? Yeah, 300 million meters per second. Well, that's how fast this white light's getting to the screen. So you can just look up the frequency of red or blue light, and you can solve for the wavelength. It's on the order of nanometers. Red light's about 400 nanometers. That's 400 billionth of a meter. I, did I say red? That's blue. Four, 400's blue. Red is around 700, longer wavelengths. But you could always go and calculate it because of that relationship. So they all get diffracted a little differently, refracted. The point is, here's a big opening. Little waves, it's like they fit right through it. Remember when we had a big opening, there was less diffraction? Let's make the opening small now, comparable to the size of the waves. I'll slide one of these over a little bit. There we go. I'll dim the lights. I think you'll see it better. So some light's getting through the slit. But look at that thing in the middle. There is no line down the middle. It's open. 
it's open that big. There's nothing right there in the opening. I just took the two veins and moved them together closer. But now it's a small opening. So what do the light waves do? They diffract, just like we saw with the water. This edge makes them diffract, that edge makes them diffract, and look where they come together. Destructive interference. There's no light hitting there. They're interfering after they diffracted. Let's open those back up. We can go this way too. So they get closer and closer together. Whoop, there. No, nothing in the middle. Boom, destructive interference. They diffract from the two sides, top and bottom, and then destructively interfere in the middle so we don't see it. They're constructively interfering where you see, do see the white light. Questions? Whoa. Defraction is the bending or the spreading of waves around an edge, period. If the two edges both diffract, you got two sources from Halkin's principle. Now those two wave fronts can interfere, and they can interfere constructively or destructively. Let's use an actual laser pointer now. I'm sending this laser through a slit. Can you see it spread out? Let's make the slit really wide. There. Nothing happens. It just goes right through the middle. Block it. Now, I, I, this thing just lets me uh, close the slit. Let's watch what happens. You see it starting to spread horizontally? It's diffracting. It's harder and harder for red wavelength to get through a smaller and smaller. So diffraction is proportional to the size of the opening. The smaller the opening, the more the diffraction. You need to know that. The smaller the opening, the harder it is for a wave to get through. So it diffracts and spreads out more. But you can, you can leave the slit the same and change the wavelength coming in. If your opening's only yay big and you send red light through it, it's harder to get through it with the big wave, red, big red wave then a blue light. Blue light wouldn't spread out as much. Let's show that. Uh-oh. Oh, it's over here. So here's a red light, and I'm going to send it through what's called a diffraction grating. This is a bunch of little slits all together. See how it spreads them out in all directions? It's kind of like that opening I sent white light through. It's diffracting horizontally and vertically. So everywhere you see light on this and on this, they're constructively interfering. Wherever you see dark, the, the, the dark spot in between these, destructive interference. Do you see the dark spots in between here? Can you see it okay in the back row? That's interference. The dark spots are from destructive interference. The bright spots are constructive interference. So it's going from both edges of those slits. Those wave fronts interfere, and you get constructive and destructive. There's actually no light hitting the screen right there, or there, or there, as they spread out. This diffraction grating, do you think the slits are closer together or farther apart than the one up there? Closer, because these are getting spread out a lot more. Just gauge how far those are apart. And let's do different colors. You know what? Maybe I'll make it less. So red has a long wave. Let's do green. Smaller squares or bigger squares? Yeah. It's the, the green light isn't diffracted as much. Why? Green waves are a little smaller than red waves, so they get through the opening easier without being diffracted as much. The wavelength of green light is smaller than red. So the size of those red waves diffracting and the size of smaller wavelength, green wavelength waves 
don't get diffracted and spread out as much. And here's blue. Yeah. Our eyes don't respond to blue as well, so it's harder to see. So let's make it a little dimmer. Let's see if that's sufficient. Can you see that okay? It's dimmer, but can you tell there's smaller squares? Even less diffraction. Can you see it okay? It's hard to focus on, very hard. I can try getting closer too. So it'll be brighter. So, red. Green, like I need to tell you. <laughs> and blue, even smaller. Less diffraction, smaller wavelength. So it's proportional to the, the size of the wave, the wavelength, and it's proportional to the size of the opening. Both of those tell you how much it's going to spread out. But the way to remember both of those is if, if the wave can get through the opening easier, there's less diffraction. Big opening, easy to get through, less diffraction. You can diffract light um, let's do two slits. This, there's two slits. And I'm going to adjust the single slit to be roughly the same-ish. So the top is just from a single slit. Lots of diffraction, small opening, small slit. It's spread out a lot. This one has two. You can see that the kind of pattern is the same. That's from how far apart the two slits are. But this slit has two edges, and this slit has two edges, so there's more waves interfering. And you get destructive interference where there wasn't any before, as I added a second slit. You still have the dark here, dark there, dark here, dark there. But each of those bright spots is subdivided up in more interference, because we added a second slit. Let's add a whole bunch of slits. Let's do oh, um, this one. Gee, where's it at? It's way over here on the side. This has a whole bunch of tiny little slits. So here's the first middle constructive interference, and then destructive, 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 de way over there. So there's smaller slits, but there's a whole lot of them. Anything like that, pantyhose, a curtain screen, any mesh stuff. Here's, here's a piece of, of mesh, just a bunch of small openings. It diffracts up and down. And you can see that. How many of you have seen those glasses where you put them on and then you look at your Christmas tree lights and you get pictures? Like smiley faces or something. That's diffraction. The pattern on here is such that it causes all these waves to diffract, and then they interfere in such a way to form an image. Through constructive and destructive interference, you get snowflakes, you get snowman, you get smiley faces. It's from diffracted waves interfering. It works too. If you look at a light source like this, I see smiley faces. Because the light comes through the diffraction grating and splits up my eyeballs the screen. Last one here, it even does it through a circle, just a hole. This is just a really small pinhole once I line it up. There we go. So there's edges all the way around it. So there's still constructive and destructive interference. You can see the light and the dark. It just does it radially all the way around it. Again, it's just because waves diffract. And then they can interfere with each other. Questions? Oh, Let's do this one then. I'm going to dip the, I meant to do that earlier. That in the soap bubble, and we'll show you that one again.
Oh yeah, go slow, water on the overhead. <laughs> So again, this is a thickness of soap film. Some light reflects off the front surface. Some goes into it and reflects off the back surface and then comes back out. So you got two waves coming at the screen. One from the, bounced off the front, one bounced off the back. The one that went through the soap film and bounced off the back had to travel a slightly farther distance. That could get it out of phase with the one in the front. And so here is destructive and constructive interference, subtracting or adding colors together. Uh, it's because of this interference thing. And because we did it at the end, I wanted to show you again. So here where it looks cyan, what color is being destructively interfered? Cyan is the combination of blue and green. So red is being destructively interfered. These are often called in nature iridescent colors. Iridescent. That's the cyan, magenta, and yellow. And it's this pr principle. So if you see a shell with a shiny coating that looks colorful like this, it looks iridescent. Or butterfly wings. It's because some colors are being subtracted out. And usually through interference. All right, I'm going to just intro you the polarization, and it doesn't take long, so we can finish. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Better closure. We'll just save polarization completely for next time. End with this one. So there's only one thing left. It's polarization, obviously. This is a diffraction grating. We did this with a prism. I'm going to send light over there. And we saw light refract. Now I'm going to send it through a diffraction grating. And you know the light will spread out. And we'll see what colors we get. Since they're different wavelengths, they should diffract different amounts. And sure enough, they do. Here's where it goes straight and see how they get diffracted. So you can spread out white light into its different colors with a diffraction grating or a prism. One's from refraction, one's from diffraction. I know I'm getting close and you guys are stopped paying attention, but one last thing, because something switches. Which color got refracted the most? It's, it's the one, refractions through the speed. Whoever goes faster through it, gets refracted the most because it's those interactions. Who goes faster? In refraction. This was the prism. It was blue. That's why blue is on the inside of a rainbow. It got bent the most. It's because its frequency is higher, more interactions, travels. It, I think I said something wrong. It's the interactions that slow it down the most. And this guy doesn't matter that we're, we're done, not done teaching yet. So, uh, blue gets refracted the most, bottom line. Who gets diffracted the most? Red. It's different. It's opposite, and I don't want that to confuse you. Why does red get diffracted the most? It's spread out the most, farthest. It has the longer wavelength, so it gets affected by that opening more. It's harder to get through that. So it gets diffracted the most. So red gets diffracted the most, but blue gets refracted the most. Different reasonings. All right. I'll stop.